Welcome to a special Context Goes Global here on YouTube. As America, Belarus, and other countries around the world grapple with violent outbreaks and government crackdowns and oppression of innocent people, we turn for a look at last week's bloodshed on the other side of the world, in the streets of Lagos, Nigeria. Peaceful protesters were literally shot by men dressed in black and opened fire on anyone protesting against the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS, as they're known. SARS is a police unit many Nigerians accuse of killing and kidnapping Nigerians for years. Nigerian journalist and managing editor of Minority Africa, currently living in Uganda, Caleb Okereke, joins us, as well as Ola Adebayo, former communications professional from Nigeria, currently living here in Canada. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you for having us. So uh, tell me about how this SARS movement started. Maybe, uh, Caleb, you can share that with me. Yeah, so SARS is, uh, as you said, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad. And it was started in the year 1992, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and the idea behind SARS was to tackle precise crimes that the police could not often do. You know? So they were designed to be covert in the operations and tackle crimes like kidnapping and robbery um, and other violent crimes. Um, and because of the idea of being covert, this means that the men moved about in unmarked vehicles and often without wearing uniforms. And this is the same secrecy that they have now weaponized to perpetuate harm. So it didn't take long for that to happen. You know? I saw a report today by an independent body saying that 30,000 people have lost their lives to SARS. You know, so that's a, wow. And that's a report like of people that can like, would actually count. You know, think of, of, of people that, that can be estimated within the framework of statistics or research. Think about the number that we cannot count. You know. Right. And Ola, you live here in Canada. What have you heard from those that you know in, in Nigeria about what reality is like living with SARS uh, just running around, obviously killing over 30,000 people and kidnapping so many others? Uh, I would say it's an horrible experience for people um, generally. And the thing is that it's not just SARS. Uh, the entire police enforcement, law enforcement with regards to Policemen in Nigeria has been horrible. Even when I was when I was living in Nigeria, also I've had horrible experiences myself. Uh, for instance, a very a memory that I'll never forget is on my return from my after I got married. I was coming from my honeymoon. I uh, had my honeymoon in Ghana, and I remember going back home to Abuja, and a custom service convoy just rounded up about ten vehicles and made us all make a U-turn and handed over us to policemen. Uh, it, it looked like it was an arranged operation that they do every other day. And it took us into the bush, some kind of kidnap. And I remember then I was with my beautiful wife and my younger brother who was driving us. And we're in that bush for like four hours till it was, you know, almost getting dark. And I remember that I had a bag of rice and some cash in me. I think I was probably the only one that released early, you know, after I'd given up my bag of rice and some amount. And this is uh, one I was lucky not to have been, you know, shot or maimed or whatever. And that's the story. I can tell you stories upon stories upon stories of myself personally and all the people living back home in Nigeria. So the entire uh, force, uh, whether it's police, whether it's Hemi, you know, it's been some kind of high-handed operations for many years. So Caleb, explain to me what uh, the demands are. We're seeing young people rising up and speaking against uh, SARS. We're seeing social media movements. What exactly are the demands? If that's a very important question. I think for this time, the demand was particularly to end SARS. And it was clear that that was, like, it was, clear that that was the ask because we have seen various performative attempts at ending this unit in the past, you know, in 2017, we saw the government say it's been disbanded in 2018. Every time there's like, an, there's, there's like a wave of protest, you know, of course, n nothing of this magnitude has happened before, but there have been protests against us in the past. And the government announces, there was a time they announced a rebranded name, where they called them FSAS, and then shipped the same officers to the same unit, you know. But we didn't want that this time. 
And more than anything, what we also wanted was accountability. You know, the people who have been victims of this raid, how are we holding the officers accountable? When the government announced the disbandment this time, what they said was they would form a new unit called SWAT and then ship the officers from SAS to this new unit, which doesn't solve the problem. You know, we're, we're talking about the, the, the people who form part of the system. You know, so if you're shipping them from one unit to another, that's not solving the problem. So I think our ask now basically is end the unit, hold the officers who are there uh, like accountable. We don't want to see you retrain them and put them in in a new unit under a new name, end it for real. Okay. And, and what, maybe Ola, maybe I'll turn to you. Describe what happened last week that caused this protest, which was fairly peace, peaceful for over 10 days, turn to be so deadly. Yes, so um, after about two weeks, uh, the protest started about 3rd October, I think, and it started building up. As I heard, I heard that um, initially uh, it wasn't even supposed to be uh, an on-the-street kind of a thing, and people were just doing it on social media. Then at some point, some of the you know celebrity artists, musicians joined the protest, and people took to the streets. And for over two weeks, it kept mounting up shares and reshares from all over the world. Uh, it kept building up. And then um, until about... Um, the ninth, when the president eventually appealed for peace, uh, and um, but still it kept building up. Then on the tenth, I think that was when the f the first fatality came. Someone was shot, I think, somewhere in the bottom of your state, um, southwestern Nigeria. And after that killing, more people took to the streets, and it became, you know, all over the federation. And then the day when the lucky shooting happened. Uh, I think that was June 20th. I think it was about 6.45 a.m. Uh, government um, had already come out to say there's going to be a curfew. Uh, the, the government has said people should stay indoors, but the guys and on the lake, at the lake tour persisted and stayed there. And um, I think there was a viral video that went out. We couldn't really see clearly what was happening, but we had some very serious gunshots all around. And um, that was it. Yeah. Hmm. And, and Caleb, do we know who these men in black clothing were that opened fire on these peaceful protesters? We, 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 we can speculate who they are, you know, and we can speculate from the tidbits of evidence we've been able to gather from eyewitness accounts. Um, it, it's, it's not possible for, I mean, it is possible, but it's unlikely for thousands of people to be lying at the same time you know, and several and multiple eyewitnesses have said we saw soldiers coming you know yeah. there's a video as well which is interesting because the, the the video that actually shows the soldiers and that's something that i think is very important in a sense it, it's as though they want you to know that they did it although the response of the president um, has been criticized he calls the protesters hooligans uh, what is your response to how the president of Nigeria has responded to all of this? Well, I think to an extent, um, the president responded well to an extent. But on the other side of it also, um, as a leader of the nation, as a, a pres sitting president who's seen the kind of violence that we've seen and based on precedences in Nigeria, I think it faulted. Now, why I said... He probably responded well is because just like um, Caleb said, you know, there's been so much of viral videos going around. And at some point, the protests were beginning to kind of, um, there were beginning to be some kind of div divisions and incursions into the protests. There were counter protests and stuff like that. So why I say that the president responded well is because um, there could be security reports that the president has privy to. For instance, on the morning of that uh, lucky shooting, I was monitoring a, a live broadcast of some guy who was inciting mayhem. He was broadcasting from somewhere outside of Nigeria. Uh, I was able to find out where he was broadcasting. It was thousands and thousands of mayhem, miles away. And he has influence. He has foot soldiers. The guy was saying things like... Um, 
uh, they have all the hammerations and stuff that has been rolled into the country and all the, all the stuff like that. Now, out, outside of him, there were some other guys who were inciting tribes against each other. So I'm imagining that if the president didn't hold a stand, uh, you know, a firm stand at that point in time, uh, it could be probably worse than what we're talking about right now. But in the father really role, in the role of a president who has seen uh, the genuineness of the protesters for the NSAS protesters, I think you should have been able to make a distinction between the NSAS protest and those who had probably hijacked the protest. And that's why mm. I think infuriated uh, some of us and every other person. Mm. Okay. Caleb, what what can Canadians do? I know that there are many people globally who will say this is a Nigeria issue and will pray for Nigeria, but this has become a global issue. As you mentioned, Beyonce, Rihanna, so many celebrities are talking about this. What can people who don't live in Nigeria do about this? Yeah, so I think the very first role we have, even I as a Nigerian who's not in Nigeria at the moment, what I've been doing with her with squad called the online protesters you know, so our job is to amplify and share the content and continue to retweet and share the videos and get as much media attention as we can if i was there i would be, certainly be doing some underground reporting but i can't do that now so mm. the best i can do is to share so i think for people for canadians as well like everyone else who's not in nigeria the the best we can do is share amplify um call call, call attention to it there's a, it's not a guarantee, but there's a chance that when people know the world is watching, they're less likely to misbehave. And sometimes they do misbehave like they did last week. You know, but, but when they know that people are looking at them, you know, they would be more likely to perform kindness or empathy. You know, um, so share, donate to people, um, verify it. I know the feminist coalition stopped accepting donations, but there's two some smaller organizations that are so the donations of protests, so you can donate to them as well. Um, pretty much, I think, yes. And exactly what okay. we're doing right now, talk about it. Yeah. Let people know about it. All right, well, thank you both for your time again. Caleb, okay, okay, Reke, I'm gonna get that right. And uh, Ola Adebayo, thank you so much for joining thank us you, today.